Hello, and welcome to the next workshop. This is Beyond the Buy Button, addressing revolutionary changes in B2B customer experience expectations through embedded finance. My name is Jennifer Tomatana, and I am president of the Fletcher Group, and I am honored to be here today to help guide us through the next hour of this workshop on this really important and new and novel topic that a lot of us I know are learning about in real time. Uh, so we've got a tremendous panel of experts that we're going to bring in in the back half of our session today to have a lively discussion around these topics and what does it mean for customer loyalty going forward in B2B. But we're going to kick off uh, to sort of level set with us all today on what we're talking about with Brandon Spear, who is the CEO of Trevi Pay. And Brandon is a true expert on this topic and is gonna walk us through some slides that give us an understanding of what really is embedded finance, what does it mean for B2B, and what is it truly going to mean and how is it gonna change customer expectations and customer experience in the future? So Brandon, welcome and over to you. Great, thanks so much for the introduction, Jennifer. And, uh, and I gotta say, it's a real uh, pleasure and privilege to be here. Uh, as Jennifer said, we've got some fantastic panelists who are gonna participate in, in the discussion. Uh, as we get through this initial content. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's jump into, into the, the presentation. Um, I think as you probably know, you know, your payment strategy is really critical to your customer experience. And if we look to the consumer world, we've seen that, that they've shown considerable interest in using click to purchase buy buttons to quickly com complete their e-commerce transactions. In fact, in a recent payments study of 811 companies, it was, it was found that buy buttons can significantly reduce checkout times with consumers spending an average of 99 seconds on checkout when they were leveraging this feature compared to 176 seconds when they were not using it. So obviously a, a, big, a much better overall customer experience. We've also seen that the share of retailers that offered buy buttons rose significantly to 76% in Q4 of 2020. So that's, uh, that's the upside, but I think one of the, the, the key points here is that simply adding a buy button and more payment adoption methods to the menu, might well, well, that might be the end goal. It's really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what it comes to really, when it comes to really executing on this strategy. And what lies beneath this objective is a much more comprehensive embedded payment strategy and program that removes friction and pain points from the transaction. As such, embedded payments is really all the plumbing and the behind the scenes processes and tools that make the buy now button for the B2B buyer seem effortless and friction free, which is obviously what the end goal of this is. The, uh, the growth trajectory is, uh, is staggering in this space. So as more and more volume moves online, the total addressable market for B2B commerce will top somewhere around $7 trillion in 2030. And we've seen the massive way this channel adoption grew during the pandemic. But there's another significant side effect to the move online. B2B customer expectations have also shifted dramatically. So where are we today? Well, we are, we're already well on our way to over a trillion dollars in B2B sales. And these are taking place online and we see that trend accelerating. According to Digital Commerce 360, as, as many as 57% of B2B buyers have made at least one purchase online during the pandemic. As B2B buyers, the level of comfort grows with this channel. The shift could really prove lucrative for vendors who are well positioned to cater to this digital purchasing phenomenon. Additionally, Digital Commerce 360 also reports that online B2B marketplaces could facilitate as much as $3.6 trillion worth of sales by 2024. So we're seeing a very real shift in B2B buyer behavior away from the in-person led interactions to digital first interactions. In fact, in a recent a report from Forrester's analyst, principal analyst, Jay Mc, McBain, he has, uh, he's been quoted to say that three years of consumer behavioral change was squeezed into one year in 2020. He goes on to say that the delta between B2C buyers and B2B buyers has collapsed during the pandemic. B2B buyers who require a variety of payment options, including net terms, are beginning to expect their purchases to be transacted with the ease and convenience of an Uber payment. In April of 2021, we commissioned a, a study with Forrester Consulting 
to try to understand how sellers have evolved their payment offerings in the face of these rising customer expectations and ongoing business and technology challenges. Over 90% of the re respondents expect that improving payment options for B2B customers will improve customer satisfaction, speed up the transactions, free up internal resources, and increase their business success. As a result of all of this change, and in the face of the feedback that your customers' expectations have probably changed forever, the competition to own B2B customers has intensified. B2B customers must develop, B2B companies must develop a future ready and resilient payment strategy that allows them to accomplish these four goals. Earn loyalty and repeat purchases. This is all about being the easiest and best supplier to your customer. And we'll talk some more about how to accomplish this. Be able to run and operate at scale and subsequently lower costs. Online is a lower cost sales channel, but you should also make sure that you can achieve this in your payment support and collection processes as well. Increased revenue potential. I think this is one of the ultimate goals, and this is all about the digital first customer acquisition, then retention, and by being the easiest supplier to deal with. And then last but not least, there's also tremendous opportunities to improve your cash flow by being paid on time or early that allow you to redeploy that cash in, in the way that you grow your business. So if your customers don't already expect their B2B payments to be invisible, they are like they are in the consumer world, they are headed in that direction. Building the capability to deliver on this promise requires significant work, technical expertise, and a firm grasp of all of the costs that can arise. And we're going to work through some of these key considerations in the next couple of slides. So first and foremost, B2B payments need to present more like B2C payments. And merchants that can do this and meet the expectations of the digital first buyer will, will win a disproportionate portion of this market. Everyone wants B2B to feel like B2C, but we all know that B2B is harder. Why? Well, simply put, there are more stakeholders in both the seller and buyer organizations that need to pair off with one another. So starting at the beginning, how do you onboard a new customer and how do you offer them payment terms and a credit line? Is this digital first and is it transparent or is it paper-based and opaque? Once the buyer is onboarded, your sales processes need to align with the way procurement works inside of the buyer that you're working with. Do they need a purchase order on every invoice as an example? Your accounts receivable teams need to interact with the accounts payable teams of the buyer to ensure on-time payment so that you can allow the, the cash to be applied against invoices so that you can open up credit lines and allow your customers to buy more. In addition to this process alignment, B2B merchants must offer multiple ways for their customers to pay and ease of one-click purchasing, offering buyers the same immediate gratification that they can get in a B2C transaction. Our Forrester study found that organizations offer now as many as 4.7 uh, different payment methods on average to their customers. And these include things like wire transfers, digital wallet payments, traditional credit cards, and real-time payments. The most effective embedded payment experiences <clears throat> make a company easier to do business with by letting the buyer interact and transact on their preferred terms. Bus business customers prefer to purchase on terms and spend more more frequently when they have a dedicated financial relationship and credit line with a supplier. In fact, we believe that this, this equation is really how you should think about your business and how you can expand your business with your customers. It's everything from instant decisioning on a credit line and the size of the credit line that are key to B2B buyers and will help you attract the best types of buyers, namely those that are repeat buyers and, and ultimately put you in a position to do more business and, and have a larger share of wallet with those customers. It's also about having a dedicated financial relationship with your buyers. So if you think about a, a net terms offering as an example, that is a specific dedicated relationship between a buyer and a seller. And when you couple that with friction-free purchase with the friction-free purchasing process, it really, it typically drives up the total order values you can get from those customers. The combined result of being good at these four things is an increase 
increase in the share of your customer's wallet and enhance an increase in their loyalty with you. In fact, a Forrester study found that more than 50% of sellers were already offering installment plans from their credit department for subscription or consumption-based terms or installment offerings managed by a FinTech partner. So this is a very real tool that uh, suppliers are using today as a way to increase the loyalty with the buyer base that they have. All businesses are in the midst of some form of digital transformation, which has significantly accelerated over the last 18 months. This means that B2B buyers expect a digital first experience, which means no paper forms or slow manual processes to onboard a new customer. It also means that an opaque process that takes a long time to underwrite a new customer and provide them with a credit line is no longer acceptable. Customers want this to be real time and they want it to be transparent. Another example of this is that a PDF email to a customer is not a digital first process. Increasingly, buyers want these invoices loaded directly into their procure to pay or ERP platforms. And in many cases, this might mean that unless the supplier has an embedded payments partner, they must figure out how to integrate into these platforms or take on the manual work of doing it themselves. Manually reconciling bank deposits and applying cash to, pay, to, to paid invoices is also a no longer a scalable process and doesn't not free up does not free up the credit lines of your customers soon enough. The more digital first a seller is, the more likely they are to be able to support these new needs of their B2B buyer. And also the more likely they are to run these processes at a lower overall cost. If a B2B brand is smart about how it designs this approach and how it can help businesses improve cash flow by allowing buyers to receive invoices daily, weekly, or monthly and make payments on terms that they control. It's also critical to allow ways for other additional data like purchase order numbers or uh, to be added to invoices that support integrations into procure to pay and ERP platforms. While this example oversimplifies the requirements of the sophisticated buyer, it is an example of how just by aligning the way you produce an invoice and the way you can add data to an invoice, might make the lives of your accounts payable counterpart or your procurement counterpart inside your buyer that much easier. And as a consequence, they're more inclined to spend more with you. If you have hundreds of customers who are placing these demands on you as a seller, then working with an embedded payments provider or using technology can mask the significant amount of that plumbing, that iceberg that we showed you at the beginning of the deck and, and how you solve for that and are able to scale that over time. So as more and more transactions move online, so it is increasingly important to validate that customers are who they say they are. And we see this as one of the next frontiers, one of the next challenges, because there is so much information online that bad actors are able to figure out who the officers are of a company, what addresses they use, even down to the full legal name and articles of incorporation. And so there's a growing trend that not enough people are talking about of around business identity theft. And as a seller, if you're acquiring your customers online, you need to be aware of the risks of this application fraud, namely somebody applying for a credit line and masquerading as a real business. Balancing this challenge and this risk is almost like an arms race with these bad actors. And it can be a real challenge because unless you work with a sophisticated partner that's focused on on adapting and, and pivoting as these bad actors find new ways to, uh, to masquerade as real businesses, this can make its way into, into fraud and into a significant amount of fraud for a particular supplier. Lastly, customer accounts can also be compromised and key information change like bank account details, delivery addresses. So this is not just about application fraud, but make sure you're being smart about how you use, thing, use things like multi-factor authentication, to validate any changes to this sort of critical data uh, for your B2B customers. So in, in summary, B2B customers now have the same heightened expectations as B2C buyers. Brand loyalty has always been the standard for how sellers try to maintain and differentiate from their, from their competition. Increasingly, we're seeing this shift to an experienced loyalty. The revenue, revolutionary changes of customer experience, engagement, and convenience em, were embraced by the rising digital generation and the shifts accelerated by COVID 
have seen this move happen in the last 18 months. And it's a profound change. Customers care a lot more about the experience and about how simple it is to work with you as a supplier than they ever did before. And so if you're assuming the same level of pricing, product and service quality, the new way to differentiate is to make the experience of buying from you easier than your competitors. In many cases, the best way to accomplish this goal is to work with the right sort of partners who focus on streamlining and eliminating friction from all steps in the order to cash process. Sellers that meet these new expectations will establish stickiness and loyalty with their customers and enjoy cost savings, increased revenue potential, and ultimately much better cash flow from those customers that they have today. So with, uh, with that as an, as an introduction to, uh, 